Welcome back, my friends, to the show that never ends. Glad you could attend. Come inside as we take a look at the movie Silent Hill Revelation in 3D. Yes, it's brought to us by newer writer-director Michael J. Bassett, and it tells the story of Heather Mason, who's on the run with her father from a group of individuals that want to kidnap her and do nasty things to her. And meanwhile, she's plagued by nightmarish dreams about a location place called Silent Hill. Well, when the people catch up with them and kidnap her father on her 18th birthday, she, along with someone from her high school who she befriended, goes to the location Silent Hill, which she realized is that where they took him, and tries to get her father back, and she's sucked into the alternate reality in a bizarre world that has, uh, is in Silent Hill, and that plagues them so, and we see the events unfold from there as she tries to rescue her dad. Now, there's a lot of hate out there on the web for this film, and it all depends on what kind of film you're expecting. Now, from the movie poster alone, you could tell you got a big old pyramid head guy with a big, huge, super over exaggerated sword pointed directly at you you know you're not going to get a whole lot of depth which uh, may have is a departure a bit from the first one the first one had a lot of depth to it this one not so much but some great visuals some positives I really liked about this film one is the visuals I love the production design the world the alternate reality of Silent Hill the creepy dreamy world if you will definitely had that old school nightmare on Elm Street feel to it you know and not a lot of people do that very well so I really like that the transition from reality to creepy freaky world okay we spend a lot more time in the freaky world in this one than we do in uh, the first one so there is a little bit departure there as well also what I liked was the creature designs it's like you take this uh, Nightmare on Elm Street type of production world and then you throw in creatures that look like they came out of Clive Barker's uh, uh, you know mind okay so I really love the creature design and the uh, environment that they are put in okay Fan, I'm a big visual guy. Lots of visual stuff going on, especially for horrific fan, uh, horror fans out there. Definitely a lot of horrific scenes going on, and I really uh, like those visuals. Okay, so it was entertaining from that aspect. What was also entertaining were the performances by the actors. Now you got Adelaide Clemens, who's a newcomer here, and uh, she does great as the main lead actress. She's kind of got this strong role, vulnerable side to her, where she screams kind of at the freaky things coming at her, but she's also not afraid to reach into the chest of one of those freaky things when needed, okay? You also got Kit Harrington in here from Game of Thrones doing a nice job. Carrie Ann Moss is fantastic in the scenes she's in. Sean Bean, another Game of Thrones alum, is in here reprising his role uh, that he did in the first one along with Rada Mitchell who also reprises her role for a short bit in this film. And you get a surprise by Malcolm McDowell in here and I... That was one of my favorite scenes in this film was Malcolm McDowell's scene. Loved his bit in it and definitely uh, was entertaining to watch and always great to see him on screen. And in fact, I said a lot of these things. This film has a lot of bits, almost like cutscenes from a video game, that are really well done. and some great dialogue and some meat there. Unfortunately, getting to those scenes is kind of flat with cliche dialogue, okay? Uh, Michael J. Bassett wrote this as well as directed it, and they tried to get the original writer of the first film Film back, but unfortunately he had some legal troubles and couldn't write from prison. And that's where this film is lacking is in the depth. In the first one you had the creepy, ashy filled environment of Silent Hill, and occasionally you would go into the alternate reality, where in this one just the opposite, you're spending most of your time in the alternate reality. Also, the sequel does tend to ignore a few things from the first one as well, or kind of writes themselves techno babble out of it, which isn't too bad for a horror sequel. You do get that every so often. I mean, heck, we got Nightmare on Elm Street, a dog pissing fire to help get Freddy back. But in any case, you can kind of overlook that, but unfortunately, the dialogue and the, the, the rehash of a lot of stuff from the first one uh, also takes away from this film being a more solid movie, okay? So I had to give it two and a half stubs okay visually stunning love the different designs and the original content there plus a great scene with the nurses that you've seen in the first one they're back in this fantastic scene love that bit of it but overall those bits and pieces aren't enough to make it a big solid film so two and a half stubs for the movie man on this film definitely when you want to catch it if you're a Silent Hill fan, you'll see a lot of references there. Otherwise, you'll probably want to wait for rental on this one, just because it doesn't quite hit the mark or the creepiness or the atmosphere of the first one. And that'll about do it for us here at the Final Cut. Until next time, keep the tickets down.
and come inside with the movie man as we take a look at Silent Hell. Uh, Silent Hell. <laughs> Silent Hell. No.